Hello, and welcome to today's Tomorrow Talk. I'm your host, Mark, and today I'm joined by special guests Ashanti and Miranda. On today's episode, we will be discussing the death of Kobe Bryant, in particular the news reports and social media messages that came out immediately after the event. Questions about who was on the helicopter and what was really going on were floating around social media. Our guests today have watched and analyzed Kobe Bryant, the death of a legend, and a number of other media messages to try and analyze and figure out the media coverage of this incident. To begin, let, to begin this discussion, let's take a quick look at a clip from Al Jazeera's The Death of a Legend. World champion Kobe Bryant. For two decades, Kobe Bryant rose above every challenge that came his way in basketball's elite league, the NBA. One of the game's all-time greats, he spent his entire career with the Los Angeles Lakers, winning the NBA championship on five occasions. Bryant also won two Olympic gold medals for the United States. It is a uh, giant in, in the sports world. It goes far beyond the NBA, goes far, far beyond basketball. Uh, he is a worldwide uh, giant in sports. Uh, I, it's hard pressed to find anyone that doesn't know Kobe. He was bigger uh, than life. Uh, he is uh, one of the biggest, most well-known NBA players of all time. Um, after Michael Jordan, uh, he is one of the players that made the NBA into a global sport and took it into this next uh, century. Well, as we can see, this was a very tragic event. So how do you think the portrayal of his death could be better represented? Miranda? So I feel like um, the media coverage was a little bit, um, it wasn't represented correctly at first. There was a lot of miscommunication about who all was on the plane and how many people um, had died in the accident. Um, I do feel like a lot of people did a good job of focusing on the good things about him and not just the fact that he was an amazing basketball player, he was a great father, he was a great husband, and was larger than life, like the video said. Right. I feel like a lot of people took advantage of his death. On Twitter, there was a clip of a helicopter going down, and people were claiming that it was from the moment Kobe died, but it was not. It was from another incident that happened in a desert. And also, there was a tweet going around with thousands of views and retweets about saying Kobe will die in a helicopter crash that was actually made on an app that day after he died just to get the attention. I feel like a lot of people just really want the likes and retweets and attention from it. TMZ also reported it without telling his wife first and that's how his wife Vanessa found out about his death. With uh, speaking about how TMZ reported on it, what do you think, uh, how, how did you respond to that? How did you respond when you found out that TMZ really jumped the gun on this? I personally wasn't shocked because TMZ has been shady in kind of a low life station. Um, I feel like they are reporting news, but obviously only to their benefit since they only focus on celebrity news. It's like trash TV, basically. I feel like it would have been better for them to report it to Vanessa first, but at the same time, they don't have an obligation to. But out of respect for Kobe's family and Vanessa especially, they should have said something to her first. I agree with that. Um, I was very surprised when I found out that TMZ broke that news and Vanessa didn't know yet. I can't imagine what that would be like. I actually heard that um, when she found out, she made her Instagram account private, whereas before it was public. And I think that's just because when something like that happens, you tend to get a lot of followers just because of the tragic accident, which is really hard to deal with when you're already dealing with trying to accept that that happened. Right. It's a terrible thing and, and you really, it makes you, think like exactly like you said you know if especially when you're in a celebrity spotlight like that and your family is is constantly being you know seen and photographed and reported on you do have to remember that they are just people and when when something like this happens a lot of times you know news outlets like TMZ or, or um, something of that nature 
they don't really appeal to the, the human nature. They sort of just, they want to get the story out. Yeah. Well, thank you. All right. Well, thank you. You all bring up a lot of very good topics about misrepresentation. So now we have to take a quick break, but when we come right back, we'll talk more. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Next, we are going to be focusing on the international reaction and how celebrities and people around the United States responded to the news. Let's take a quick look at a coverage from Fox on the death of Kobe Bryant. He was well into a business career. After leaving basketball, he became a partner at a private equity firm, and he put his name on it, too, Bryant Stiebel. It's called, that's the name of it, Bryant Stiebel. They've got a piece of the legal Zoom. They've got a piece of Alibaba. They've got a piece of Dell Technologies, among other stocks. And now, Kobe Bryant is gone. He was flying his helicopter with his 13-year-old daughter. All on board were killed. The tributes, I think, are pouring in, Ash. Yeah, I mean, disbelief is the name one, and, and obviously grief as well. Um, we see outside the Staples Center, uh, vigil outside, candles, uh, you know, uh, people just in disbelief. Okay, so Ashanti, let me ask you. You did a lot of research on the international position of uh, Kobe's coverage. Why do you think that he was such a driving force, not just in the U.S., but also around the world? I think it's because of how he inspired people globally. I mean, he spoke five different languages. He grew up in Italy for a time. He also was, like, a mentor and, like, an inspiration to, like, all these basketball players, especially in China. Um, as you know, China has this Twitter-like platform called Weibo, where he frequented like a lot and he had an account there and during Chinese New Year's a few days before his death he posted a happy Chinese New Year to everyone in China and when he died the topic Kobe died had 1.4 billion Weibo you know mentions on it also um, right after he died there are a few painters in the Philippines who painted this huge mural of him and his daughter Gianna a bunch of people in Israel were really upset about his death um, there was a game going on in Israel where after they found out he died they were chanting his name I think he has like a lot of star power around the world not just in the United States right. and what was uh, what do you uh, what do you think why do you think that he was such a I think being that basketball is such an international sport um, in comparison to other sports, that helps because um, they were um, they were um, playing and like had athletes from different countries, um, and the, it does help that he knew different languages. Um, I think you said five different languages, and then him growing up in Italy and having that social media presence in different countries definitely helps um, people know who he is and about his talent as an athlete. Do you think that his uh, rise in basketball was mirrored by his rise in social media? His rise in basketball mirrored by... Um, I think it helped a bit. I mean... Basketball stars, you know, they have a lot of endorsement deals, like a Michael Jordan has his Jordans. Kobe had won, like, a bunch of Oscars, had won an Oscar for his basketball short. I think basketball just took him to a new level of fame because basketball inspired him to do all these different stuff. He wrote books. He mentored for his daughter's team. He was a coach for his daughter's team. He actually advocated for the women's NBA. And... I think just really showed people what a great go-getter Kobe was. Right. Okay. Well, thank you all. I think we can see that there are a lot to consider and a lot of very interesting topics. So don't turn out. We'll be right back. Thanks for sticking with us. To end our discussion, we are going to look at the social media aspects of Kobe's death. Let's take a look at this clip of Shaq leading a chant with his fans.
definitely see that there's a lot of energy there. So uh, Miranda, I wanted to take it to you first. Um, so how did you originally find out? And what were your initial reactions? Did you think it was real? What was, what was your take? Um, so I actually found out I was on my laptop doing some work and I got a notification um, I think it was from Twitter Because um, whenever like breaking news like that comes up I get a notification and I actually did think that it was real um, I know that a lot of people are like oh, it's TMZ. That's not necessarily necessarily the most trustworthy source, but I just I'm hesitant to believe that someone would make that up. It just sounds like something very horrible and it being a helicopter crash. Um, so that's how I found out and I did believe it. And then when I went to Twitter, I saw that almost everything that was trending was about Kobe. Yeah. Ashanti, what about you? I didn't believe it at first, um, for a second. Yeah. But then when I actually pressed on the trending topic with Kobe dying, I automatically believed it. I was kind of shocked when it said at least four people have died, and then I heard that like a bunch of his, all of his kids were in the helicopter. I was very confused, and then I heard Red Fox was in the helicopter. It really bothered me, and I was really upset that someone should, would die in such a traumatic way. Right. Well, going off of the, the Rick Fox thing that you said about he was a NBA commentator, if I believe he uh, was reported to have been in the crash, which was later uh, found out to be false. And that sort of opens up the gate to how social media can be a hindrance in this. So I wanted to uh, ask Marina this question. What do you think that social media like could help or hinder the spread of information in, in the wake of a tragedy like this? I think in this situation, it didn't really help because people were so rushed to get the information out. Um, just that competitiveness of like being the first news outlet to break the news, but then not being careful to actually get the right information, the accurate information. I didn't get the actual number of people that died until about nine o'clock that night. And I think that the news was a really released around like three in the afternoon. So it did take a while for us to actually get the correct number of people and who all it was. Um, so I think in some cases it can help, but in this one, it didn't really help. There are definitely issues there, but also it did get the word out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, well, thank you both. All right. Well, I'd like to thank you all for joining us. This has been an exciting experience and a very brisk discussion. But that's all the time we have for today. Thank you all for watching today's Tomorrow Talk. I'm your host, Mark, and I'll see you on the next one.